Okay, so this is going to be a pretty quick section. Um, the reason why is that even though exponential growth and decay are incredibly important ideas, um, it's more of an idea that's going to be used in a class called differential equations, Okay, which is one that you won't take until after you've taken um, Calc 2 and um, possibly Calc 3. So here's the deal is that populations, radioactive decay, and many other physical phenomena change proportionally. That means um, they change in reference to the size itself, so by percentages. So if we start off with a population, and let's say it's size y of t, so after t amount of years we have a population of size y, then after a certain amount of years after that, the size is going to increase or decrease by a factor of k. So, for example, if the population got 30% bigger, then k would be 0.3. If it got 10% smaller, k would be negative um, 0.1. So, in terms of derivative, what that means is that means that the change in our population over time is going to be a proportion of that population. Now these are actually harder to solve than you would think, and they have a very special name when you're trying to solve an equation like this, is it's called a differential equation. And the solutions to these are typically gonna be exponential. And by exponential, we mean it's going to be c times e to the kt, where c and k are some sort of constants, e is the number e, um, because it's the natural growth, and t is time. Here's why this works is that when you take the derivative of this function, okay, remember, c is a constant, so it's going to hang out in front. The derivative of e to the anything is e to the anything. And then when you take the derivative of the inside, the derivative of kt is just k. So when you take the derivative of this function, what you get is k times c e to the kt, which is just k times our original function. Now, a couple of different ways that this is used is when you're talking about mass growth or decay. And when I say mass, I don't mean like a lot. I mean the physical mass of something. So when something is, during, is growing or decaying continuously, like radioactive material, organic matter, <clears throat> the amount of material you're left with after t amount of time is going to be the amount of mass that you started with times e to the kt where k is going to be the rate of change and t is going to be the time. Remember, if something is decaying, k would be negative. If something is growing, k would be positive. So k is less than zero means decay. Now, if instead of giving you a um, continuous growth rate, instead of they give you a half-life, which is really, really popular, um, especially in radioactive material, then instead of using an e to be your exponential growth rate, you're going to use 2. Okay? So here's what we're going to look at. So we're going to look at an example. So say that we have 80 grams of an element and it has a half-life of 3 years. We want to know how much of the material will remain after 10 years. So we're going to have m of 10 equals, well, we start off with 80 grams initially times 2 raised to the, now because it's calling this a half-life, what that means is that k, or the rate of change, is going to be negative. So we're going to have 10, the amount of years, divided by negative 3. Okay, now when we plug that into our calculator, what we're going to get is, let's go ahead and round to two decimal places, by the way. So we are only going to have 7.94 grams remaining after 10 years. Now the next question is how long until we have 30 grams of the element remaining. So we are going to have 30 equals 80 times 2 raised to the t divided by negative 3. Now, it might have been a minute since you've solved something like this, probably since Math 141, a.k.a. Algebra. 
So we're going to get the base by itself first, so divide both sides by 80. Okay, what that's going to give us is that's going to give us 3 eighths equals 2 to the t divided by negative 3. Okay, we are going to go ahead and take the natural log of both sides. Now the whole reason we took the natural log is because we want to get this exponent out in front and multiply as a constant instead. So when we do that, here's what we're going to get. Oops. Is we're going to get t divided by a negative 3 times the natural log of 2. Now to get t by itself, we're going to have that natural log of 3 eighths. Now the opposite of multiplying by the natural log of 2 is dividing by the natural log of 2. The opposite of dividing by negative 3 is multiplying by negative 3. Now if we plug that into a calculator, here's what we're going to get for our final answer. Is it would take us 4.25 years until we have about 30 grams of our element remaining. Now let's stop for a second and see if that makes sense. So if the half-life is 3 years and we have 80 grams, that means that after three years we're going to have 40 grams. So does it make sense that a little bit longer, 4.25 years later, we'll have 30 grams? I think that makes good sense. I think that's, that's pretty solid math. All right, the very last topic that we're going to talk about in this section, like I said, we're going to go pretty fast through this. We're not going to do a whole lot because, again, it is just kind of an introduction to um, differential equations, is Newton's Law of Cooling. So here's Newton's Law of Cooling. It says that if you put <clears throat> an object in a room and there's a temperature difference, right? Then what happens is that the temperature between the object and its surroundings, which sometimes is called T sub S, sometimes it's also called T sub A because it's the ambient temperature, okay? Then the change in temperature is going to be a constant times the temperature difference between the two items. Now, if you want to find the temperature at time t, you can use this equation right here. And what this equation is, is that t sub s is the surrounding temperature. Okay, So that would be like the temperature of the room or the refrigerator. t sub naught is the initial temperature of your object. K is going to be some constant at which um, your item is going to be cooling. So depending on whether you're dealing with ceramic, metal, a liquid, like soup or something, they're going to cool at different rates. So that's what K means. So let's look at this example. So say that an object is 72 degrees Fahrenheit and it's placed in a 44 degree refrigerator. After 30 minutes, the object is now 61 degrees Fahrenheit. So the first thing we want to show is that our function t of t satisfies as a solution to this derivative. So let's check and see. So what we're going to do is that we're going to take the derivative of this function. So the derivative of t sub s, well t sub s is the surrounding temperature, which means it's going to be constant, so it's going to be 0, plus t sub 0 minus t sub s. So here's the thing t sub 0 is a constant, t sub s is a constant. That means that if you subtract them, you're still going to be left with a constant, so we're going to keep that there since we're multiplying by it. All right, now we have to actually take the derivative of this piece. So the derivative of e to the negative kt, okay, is going to be e to the negative kt times negative k. So that means that the derivative of the temperature is going to be negative k times t naught minus t sub s times e to the negative kt. All right, so now that almost looks like our function, but what we're missing here is that we're missing this 
plus TS right here. So what we're going to do in the next line is that we're going to add a T sub S, but just to keep it all copacetic, we also have to subtract a T sub S. That's kind of like adding a fancy zero. So it doesn't actually do anything but change the way our function looks. So what we get is negative K times, now here's the cool part, this whole thing right here, okay, that's our function T. So this whole thing right here is our function T minus T sub S. All right, so it does in fact satisfy that cool differential equation. Super neat stuff. Sometimes you have to do some like fancy footwork. Now, one thing I want to point out is that in this top part, see how that K is positive, but down here I said it's negative. Um, the reason I put a negative on my equation down here is because typically when we talk about Newton's law of cooling, we're talking about something cooling down, which means it's losing um, kinetic energy. <clears throat> you can also use it for things heating up though. So it's probably more technically correct to just leave K as it is, but I like to think of it as negative in this section. So if we know that the temperature is 61 degrees after half an hour, the next question asks, what's the temperature after another half an hour? So the first thing we have to do is that we have to solve for K. So we know that the surrounding temperature is 44 degrees. We also know that the initial temperature of an object was 72 degrees. And we also know that the time that has passed has been 30 minutes. So when we plug all that in, we need to solve for this K here. So I have my work shown below, but I don't know why. I think it's easier to follow something if somebody writes it out. So the temperature is 61 degrees after 30 minutes, which is going to be equal to 44 plus, now 72 minus 44 is going to be 28 e to that negative 30 k. Now we're going to subtract 44 from both sides. So we are going to get 17 equals 28 e to the negative 30 k. Now whenever you're solving exponential, you want to get the base by itself first. So we need to divide both sides by 28. So we're going to have e to the negative 30 k equals 17 divided by 28. We're going to take the log of both sides or rewrite this as a log. So that's going to give us the natural log of 17 over 28 equals negative 30 K. Divide both sides by negative 30. So K, our constant, is going to be the natural log of 17 over 28 divided by negative 30. If you type that into a calculator, what you're going to get for your K constant is, it's going to roughly be 0.01663. Okay, great. Which is what I got. So after you figure out what K is, what you have is that you actually have your full time function, which says if you want to know the temperature of the object after time T, you're going to take 44 plus 28 e raised to the, and then we're going to use that k constant here. So 0 0.01663 times t. So remember, the question asked, what was the temperature going to be after 30 more minutes? So if 30 minutes has passed and we look at 30 more minutes, that means that we're going to be plugging 60 into that equation. And after 60 minutes, the temperature of our object is going to be 54.3 degrees and by the way, we're dealing in Fahrenheit.